We must go now. Papa! Tiago, go with your mother to the trap. Take this. It will always be your guide. Yes, Papa. We will join you shortly. Xavier, the painting! A malediction. This way. Signora, it is too late. Go. Senor, in here. Search them. Of course. Paris in the spring. Passion, romance. L'Amour. I was working in art insurance. It paid the rent, just about. And then, by chance, I met Nico at a private view. You didn't tell me that you were back in Paris, George. We should catch up. Let's have lunch. Nobody move! No, monsieur! Not la malediction! Oh. Stay back. Once again, Paris had shown me her dark side. A brutal robbery, a senseless murder. Nico and I were about to be drawn into a new and terrifying adventure together. The gallery owner was dead. I guess sometimes playing the hero doesn't pay. My company had insured the exhibition, so I had a crime to solve. The cops would be here soon. I didn't have much time. The priest was giving last rites to the gallery owner. I didn't want to interfere. Excuse me, Father. Yes, my son. I'm George Stobart. My company insured the exhibition. My name is Simeon. Is there anything I can do? You can pray for his soul. A senseless murder. On the contrary, this killing makes plenty of sense. What do you mean? A great evil has taken place. This is the work of the devil. What? I am a Dominican priest. I know these things. And now, excuse me, I must pray. One minute I'd been planning dinner with Nico, the next I was talking art theft, murder, and the devil with a priest. Nico wasn't answering her phone. No surprise. Hello, Mr. Rickenbacker? Stobart, what do you want? Mr. Rickenbacker, there's been a problem. Now why does that surprise me? This better not involve the blue lizard. I'm afraid it does, sir. There's been a robbery. Only one painting was stolen, though. Well, what are you wasting time talking to me for? Find that painting, or find a way to avoid paying out. Two ways to keep your job, Stobart. I see. Uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anything else you gotta tell me? The thief had a gun. He shot the gallery owner dead. We insured him, too? No, sir. Well, 
besides one piece of good news. At least tell me you got some leads. Uh, no, no, sir, not yet. Well, stop chewing the fat with me and do your job. And call me when you have some good news. Uh, will do, boss. He definitely looked better. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Poor guy. There was a small piece of paper in the dead man's hand. It was too intriguing not to take a look. It read, 2.30 p.m., be ready. Innocent enough, until I realized that the robbery took place at 2.30 p.m. There was something fishy going on around here, and it wasn't just the canapes. I quickly replaced the note. Poor guy. In Henri's pocket was a tiny bottle. It was a bottle of Brett. The label claimed it would wake the beast within. A cryptic note in a bottle of overpowering cologne. No personal effects or anything else of substance. I needed to find where he kept his records. For the discerning connoisseur, a soupçon at 80,000. The bus was balanced precariously on the pedestal. I didn't want to knock it off. The door was locked with a keypad. The wires from the camera ran into the room behind. It must have captured the whole robbery. If I could get the code to the keypad, I might be able to shed some light on the crime. Just 90000 for this one. Hmm. A rare glimpse into the absinthe addled mind of the artist. A snip at only eighty grand. The alarm still worked on that painting. I wondered why the stolen painting's alarm hadn't sounded. The stolen painting was called La Maledexio, painted by someone called El Serp in 1937, and worth just 40 grand. The stolen painting was worth less than the others. So why did the thief target it? This was where the stolen painting had hung. Why that painting? And why kill for it? The stolen painting had an alarm, which should have sounded when the painting was removed. I needed to find out why it hadn't. I pressed the vibration detector pad. Nothing happened. So that was why the alarm hadn't sounded. A wire had been cut by someone who knew exactly what they were doing. This was an inside job. The button bypassed the pressure pad system. Cutting the wire had disabled the pads. It was the speaker cone for the alarm. It hadn't sounded when the painting was stolen. It was Hector Lane, France's greatest art critic. We'd met before. It hadn't ended well. For a moment, I thought he was dead. But from the snoring, I guessed he'd only fainted. Lane was out cold. I was going to need something to bring him around. Time to awaken the beast. What? <laughs> mm. 
<laughs> what was that? It smells like... like the 70s. Where am I? You fainted. The nail clippers were monogrammed with the letters H.L. Hector Lane. They must have fallen out of his pocket. Welcome back to the land of the living. I wouldn't exactly call this living. Don't just stand there. Get me something to eat. I've had a terrible shock, you know. The thief left the pizza box behind. I wondered what was in it. Well, no surprise there. Pizza. The guy must have been hungry. There was only one slice left. I found a slice of pizza. I asked for food, boy, not a cardboard simulacrum. Oh, okay, if you don't want it. I didn't say that. Now give it here. Given the circumstances, that was surprisingly acceptable. Uh, now what's been going on? I... Oh, Henri, is he dead? Afraid so. Poor chap. Just like him to steal the limelight, though. Excuse me. Do I know you? Yes, our paths have crossed in the Glees Gallery. Of course, the man with the absinthe. I don't suppose you... Uh, afraid not. Pity. I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble remembering your name. I'm George Stobart. I insured the exhibition. I hope you have deep pockets then, my boy. Could I ask you a few questions, Mr. Lane? Fire away. Did you know the gallery owner? Of course. We worked together on the exhibition. Oh, really? Henri provided the space. I was the creative powerhouse. How long had you known him? As a friend, many years. Our professional relationship had only recently blossomed into this exhibition, under my curatorial wing. And now the poor fellow has gone and got himself killed. If Lane was involved with the gallery, then he had to know the code to that door. Do you know anything about the stolen painting? Of course, dear boy. La Maledicio, a little-known work, turned up at the last minute. What about the killer? Were you able to get a look at him? A delinquent in a tin hat. Beyond that, I don't really recall. Oh, yeah, you fainted. Those of us with a higher aesthetic are more sensitive to violence. So you curated the exhibition? What's it about? A brilliant retrospective. A dialectical window on European art's ongoing discourse with the unresolved psychoses of the nation-state. Wow, you took the words right out of my mouth. So, you help run this place? Maybe you can give me the code to that door. The code to the office? I just thought you might have the number. I do, but I couldn't possibly give you access before the police arrive. I figured I wasn't going to get the door code from Lane by playing nice. I needed to turn the heat up. Mr. Lane, you're really going to have to give me the code to that door. And why, pray, should I do that? Because the way the cops will see it, you're the prime suspect. We both know you're innocent, Mr. Lane, but the cops, well, they may not see things so simply. I might be able to get them off your case, but in exchange, I'd like the code for the office door. But that's preposterous. The police would have neither evidence nor motive. Funny you should mention that. Someone sabotaged the alarm on the stolen painting. 
A wire was cut. What? Who could have got into the alarm system? Exactly. It was an inside job, Mr. Lane. You're not suggesting that I... Well, I'm afraid that's the way the cops are going to see it. That's preposterous. How could I possibly have cut the wire? This is an inside job for sure, Mr. Lane. The police are going to be very interested in your recent movements. I've been out of town for several days, and last night I retired early. Just saying. You're not going to scare me into giving you that door code, you know. I was onto something here, and I knew it. Lane was sweating. It wasn't pretty. Don't suppose you've changed your mind about giving me that door code? Certainly not. Give me one good reason why I should. I might just do that, Mr. Lane. Are these your nail clippers, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have my initials monogrammed on them. Huh. The perfect implement for cutting the alarm on the stone painting. What are you saying? Well, the alarm was sabotaged, Mr. Lane. It was an inside job. Are you accusing me? How dare you? I had no reason to kill Henri. No motive whatsoever. Okay, but I don't think the cops will see it like that. And I sure would like that door code. The street was quiet and upmarket. Not the kind of place for an opportunist thief. From out here, you couldn't see the stolen painting. This robbery was definitely planned. The room looked like some sort of office for the gallery. I could just see the glow of the CCTV monitor in the corner. I've always been a sucker for Parisian stained glass. Excuse me. Monsieur? There's just been a robbery at the gallery. Oh, really? You don't sound surprised. All property is theft, monsieur, and all art is property, therefore all art is theft. Do you not agree? Uh, well, uh, when you put it like that, it's <clears throat> hard not to. Did you see anybody run out of the gallery earlier? There was a beautiful woman with a camera. She was chasing somebody. Oh, that must have been Nico. You know her? You surprise me. Can you tell me anything about the man she was chasing? I assume, monsieur, that like all of us, he is inherently unknowable. No wonder this guy's cafe was empty. The gallery owner, Henri, was shot dead trying to stop the robbery. Life has no meaning the moment you lose the illusion of being eternal. Right. Did you know him well? Can we ever truly know another human being, monsieur? He spent little time at the café, unlike his friend, monsieur Lane. What do you know about Hector Lane? Lane? Oh, yes. He drinks here sometimes. He slid away last night without paying. Last night? What sort of time? After midnight, for sure. If you see him, give him this bill and tell him to pay up next time. The check was from last night, but Lane told me he was nowhere near the gallery. This could be the leverage I needed to get the office door code from Lane. Thank you for your consistent indifference, monsieur. Perhaps next time you come I will give you a coffee. Perhaps not.
How about it, Mr. Lane? Ready to give me the door code yet? Certainly not. Give me a single reason why I should. Guilty by way of nail clippers. I've been away from Paris for several days and only got back this morning. How could I have cut that wire? Take a look at this. What of it? It's your bill from the cafe next door. So? It's dated yesterday. Last night, in fact. 12.30 to be exact. You said you were out of town. You sure drank a lot of champagne last night without paying the bill. But you told me that you were away from Paris last night. I hate to say it, but that sounds like a lie to me. Tell you what, you give me the code of the door and the police need never know. A motive and proof of involvement. Not looking good, Mr. Lane. You are a blackmailer, Stobart. Just doing my job. <sighs> All right. You have me. The well, number is 6397. But I admit to none of these spurious accusations. I had the code. The police would be here any moment, so I had to work fast. What was that number again? 642... No. Everyone, hold it right there. Damn it. I am Inspector Navet of the Paris Serious Crime Squad, and I hereby declare this crime scene open. I mean, closed. Now, nobody move, especially you on the floor. Mo, I want a total lockdown. Nobody in or out. Apart from me, of course. I needed to get back into the gallery, but a familiar figure was guarding the door. It was Sergeant Mu. Our paths had crossed before. Sergeant Mu, we meet again. Aha, Madame Collard! An unexpected pleasure! I was in the gallery at the time of the theft. Can I get back in? I am sorry, but I am under strict orders from Inspector Nave. Uh, nobody in, uh, nobody out. And I must correct you, madame. It is no longer just a theft. It is a murder. Mon Dieu! That poor man! Here's my press card. Do you have a statement for the paper? Yes, madame. Stay away from the crime scene and let the police do their job. And always leave a light on when you go out at night. I witnessed the crime. I've got to get back in there. I'm sure you can make an official statement in good time. I saw the thief. I think I can help the investigation. I am implacable, madame Collard. Who is Inspector Nave? Ah, the most promising young investigator on the force. A genius, a man blessed with almost superhuman insight. He sounds highly perspicacious. Madame, it is not for us to talk about the Inspector's sweaty proclivities. He is about to solve his third case in as many days. So, what's he got that the other investigators don't have? Blood spatter. He is the world expert. He reads the entrails of the crime scene like a book. I chased after the shooter and got a photo of him. Inspector Nave will be delighted. You've got to let me into the gallery to show him. Absolutely not. So I cannot go in without Inspector Nave's permission? No. And to get Inspector Nave's permission, I need to go in. Exactement. Have you ever heard of Kafka, Sergeant Mu? Madame Gola, I do not see what soccer players have to do with this. No, he's a... Never mind. 
I really need to get into the gallery and speak to Inspector Nave. Tut tut, he is not to be disturbed. He is applying his famous scientific methods. Any moment now, the case will be cracked. I certainly hope so. I am dog tired and want to go home. This was madness. Sergeant Mu wasn't going to let me in. Why are you so tired, Sergeant Mu? I have been working for three days with no rest. Nave is a genius in his field, and he assumes that we all have his energy and vigor. Oh, you poor man. If you'd like to go and get some sleep, I will watch the door for you. That's very thoughtful of you. Ha! A cunning attempt to make me a deserter, madame. A gendarme never leaves his post. Well, how about a hot drink? Ah! That would do the trick, for sure. Unfortunately, I mustn't drink on duty. My doctor specifically warned me against it after the last... Uh, incident. That incident you mentioned, what happened exactly? I don't want to talk about it. All I can say is, it was very... unfortunate. I am on duty, and I need to focus. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Sergeant Mu. You've been so helpful. Madame. Bonjour, Monsieur. Whatever it is you want, we are closed. Then why are you standing here? You would not understand, Madame. Try me. Because I look at you, and I know you are like all the others. The others? The pretty women who shop, who gossip, who have their spa days, their almond croissant. <laughs> that bad, huh? <laughs> and the men with their grooming products, and their shiny shoes, and their skinny suits who come to my cafe and ask me for... lattes, macchiatos. Frappe. I see your point. Is this what we fought on the barricades for, madame? Ripped up the paving slabs, bled on the streets. Isn't it? No, madame, it is not. We fought for ideas, for philosophy, for freedom, equality, fraternity. Vive la revolution. And do you know what drove us on as we fought? What fueled the streets of Paris in that glorious spring? What made our hearts soar? Uh, cheap wine and free sex? No, madame, no! It was French Café Noir that inspired us. The simple demitas, The black, sweet taste of freedom. So that's why you closed? Yes, madame. I serve only thinkers, philosophers, revolutionaries. And you, madame, with your polite top and your pointy ears, are none of those things. This is a cafe. Yes, to the right people. On any other day, I would have given this guy a straight one to the chin. But there was a chance he could help me get into the gallery. Here's my press card. La liberté. Madame, you are not the person that I took you to be. You must accept my deepest, my most profound apologies. Well, of course I accept. But why? La liberté. The great journal of freedom. At the height of the battle, as the tear gas blew and the blood flowed, it was La Liberté which carried the voice of our revolution to the world. I know now that you are not the kind of woman who would ask me for almond croissant. You are a true daughter of France, and I am your humble servant. Monsieur. The road to enlightenment is a long one, madame. Perhaps you will... Walk that road with me? Could we have a little chat? Anytime, madame. 
How about some coffee? For you, madame? Of course. There is only one coffee that I can serve you. Black, strong, and in a tiny cup. One moment. Here is your coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. The coffee was hot and strong. Could you make me a coffee to go? For a fellow revolutionary? Of course, madame. One moment. Here's your takeaway coffee, madame. Thank you, monsieur. Sergeant Mou, I brought you a coffee. Coffee? Fantastic! Just what I need. But wait. I must not. My little p p p problem. I'm sure one little cup of coffee won't hurt. I'm tempted, madame, but I cannot risk it. I am sorry. So, this incident, it involved you, some coffee, and your... A little problem? It is a tale of woe, madame. I'm only a sergeant. Well, since you seem quite understanding, I shall elaborate. Please do. I was in charge of canine security for the president himself. One day, en vacances, he went for a private discussion with a lady minister. I stayed alone with his dog, but I had drunk a coffee to stay awake, and nature came to call. So I tied the dog to a tree and went for a secret pee-pee. When I came back, the dog was having a liaison dangereux with the lady minister's terrier. But how did they find out? Well, two months later, the President's Labrador gave birth to six beautiful mongrels. And I was busted to sergeant, just after the President's divorce came through. You are a victim of a great injustice, sergeant. You think so? But of course. You knew you must not fall asleep at your post. You were guarding the President himself. Well... The President's dog. Ah, it was the same thing. Yes, I suppose. And by drinking that coffee, you made the ultimate sacrifice for our glorious Republic, your career. Hmm. Now you put it like that? And now France is calling you again. She is saying, drink, Sergeant Mou, drink! She is? She is. Drink, or fall asleep at your post. Which is it to be? I suppose it is... drink? Bravo, Sergeant! Oh dear! Oh dear! Excuse me, madame. I must use the petit gendarme's room. It has gone straight through me. Could you watch the gallery door for me? Oh, you can count on me, Sergeant. I distracted Mu. It was now or never. How did you get past Sergeant Mu? Huh. Well, you won't fool me so easily, madame. I shall question you later. 
Nico, am I glad to see you. I tried to phone you, but couldn't get an answer. I managed to grab a couple of photos, but the guy got away. Poor Henri is dead. I know. Why kill him? I've been trying to find out. Turns out the alarm was tampered with. It looks to me like an inside job. So, no ordinary robbery? And no ordinary painting. The priest claims that La Maledizio is evil. I need to get into the office and see what the CCTV has to offer. So, what's the problem? The inspector's watching me like a hawk. I'll never get in without some sort of distraction. I'll see what I can do.